Now we would like to compare these uh, modes of all these modes of convergence, the seven modes we have defined until now. Uh, but before that, let me give another definition, and this is of the L infinity norm. So, suppose that f is a complex valued measurable function on x. Uh, so, the first definition is an essential supremum or essential bound essential bound of f is a number positive number m such that mod f x is less than or equal to m for mu almost everywhere x. So, this bound uh, holds for almost every x. So, this is outside of a null set in x. So, any such uh, positive constant m for which this condition is satisfied is called the essential is called an essential bound of f. Now, the essential supremum essential supremum or L infinity norm is defined to be the infimum of all essential bounds of F, all essential bounds of F which means that we can denote it as F L infinity like this. So, if you want you can also write the measure mu on it, but we will usually drop this uh, measure mu from the notation and simply write it as L infinity like this. And this is by definition the infimum of all uh, numbers. So, I am uh, assuming also that m can be plus infinity. Um, so, here also we can take m to be plus infinity. Because your uh, function may not be bounded on, uh, uh, may not have any essential bound. In that case, m will be plus infinity. So, here the, it is the infimum of m lying in this extended non-negative reals such that m is an essential bound of f as defined above. So, this is the L infinity norm. So, one immediate result is the following. So, if f n is a sequence of complex measurable functions, functions on x and f is another complex measurable function is measurable. then f n converges to f uh, uniformly uniformly almost everywhere. So, what we call also essential essentially uniformly convergence essentially uniformly if and only if this norm L infinity norm of the difference L infinity goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, <coughs> so, we see that convergence in the L infinity norm is equivalent to uh, convergence uniformly almost everywhere or essential essentially uniformly. So, let us see a quick proof. So, we can recall the definition of uh, convergence uniformly almost everywhere. So, 
f n converges to f uniformly almost everywhere if given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a capital n such that so i missed uh, something which is this is for all n greater than or equal to n this condition holds for mu almost every x so to show the forward implication um, we have that if f n converges to f uniformly almost everywhere given epsilon greater than 0 there exists a capital n says that for all n greater than or equal to n we have mod of f n x minus f x is less than or equal to epsilon uh, for all x mu almost everywhere. So, outside of a null mu null set this relation holds for all n greater than or equal to capital N. Now, this means that by definition of the L uh, of an essential bound this means that epsilon is an essential bound for the function f n minus f mod so absolute value of f n minus f so this is uh, this implies that the l infinity norm of f n minus f so you can put a modulus if you like but uh, it would be the same thing um, so it's it it says that it implies that the l infinity norm of f n minus f is less than or equal to epsilon because on the right hand side this is an essential upper bound essential upper bound and on the left hand side this is infimum of all essential upper bounds so um, this L infinity, the difference has L infinity norm bounded above by epsilon and this is valid for all n greater than or equal to n and this implies that this L infinity norm of the difference goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, this is the forward implication and I leave the reverse implication as an exercise. So, prove the reverse implication left as an exercise which is essentially the same thing as we have seen in the forward implication as an exercise. So, we see that um, uniform convergence almost everywhere is the same as convergence in the L infinity norm. Now, we can see some easy implications from uh, that follow from the definitions of these modes of convergence. So, the first one is that if f n converges to f uniformly then it converges to f in L infinity norm. Remember that this was uniform convergence almost everywhere it was equivalent to uniform convergence almost everywhere. So, this is uh, this implication is actually trivial. So, this is trivial. Um, the second one is f n converges to f in L infinity norm implies f n converges to f almost uniformly. The third one is f n converges to f almost uniformly implies f n converges to f point wise almost everywhere. Fourth one is f n converges to f in L in one L 1 norm implies f n converges to f in measure and the last one is f n converges to f almost uniformly then f n converges to f in measure. So, the first one we have seen is it is trivial. This second I will only do the second and fourth in this lecture and I leave the third and fifth for the next lecture. So, the uh, second and fourth one are also quite easy. So, I will only do second and fourth and these two are will be taken up in the 
next lecture. So, let me do the second and fourth one. So, for the second one, we need to show that f n converges to f in uh, L infinity norm implies f n converges to f almost uniformly. This was our uh, second uh, statement. So, let us write down what it means for convergence in L infinity norm. This means that given epsilon, so this is to show given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a capital N such that for all N greater than or equal to capital N, this L infinity norm of the difference of F n minus F n and F, uh, this is less than or equal to epsilon. And so, this is uh, convergence in L infinity norm and convergence almost uniformly, almost uniformly, this is, this says that given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a set E. So, this set E depends on epsilon and it is a measurable set in X such that the measure of E epsilon is less than or equal to epsilon and f n uh, restricted to e complement converges to f restricted to e, co e complement uniformly. So, we say that f n converges to f uniformly outside of e. So, this is convergence almost uniformly. So, if you have convergence in L infinity norm, we have seen that this is the same as this is equivalent to convergence uniformly almost everywhere. So, this means that, so we have given epsilon greater than 0, there exists a capital N such that for all n greater than or equal to capital N mod of f n x minus f x less than or equal to epsilon uh, for x outside a mu null set. Let me call it E. This is the same as saying that uh, f n converges to f uniformly outside E and of course, the measure of E is equal to 0, measure of E is equal to 0 and of course, this is less than or equal to epsilon. Notice that this mu null set E also depends on epsilon. Uh, even though it is a null set, it may change when you vary epsilon. Uh, so, now this implies that f n converges to f almost uniformly because your exceptional set is precisely this E epsilon that we have chosen here which is a mu null set. So, this proves to for the fourth uh, part which we have to show that f n converges to f in L 1 norm implies that f n converges to f in measure. So, uh, we have to show that when f n minus f has L 1 norm goes to going to 0 as n goes to infinity, then this implies that the measure of this set mod f n x minus f x greater than or equal to epsilon 
uh, goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, this proof is quite easy because this kind of sets we know how to estimate and this is by the uh, Markov's inequality. So, by Markov's inequality for any positive epsilon we have that the measure of the set of points in x says that f n x minus f x as more or less greater than or equal to epsilon is bounded above by 1 over epsilon times the L 1 norm of f n minus f. So, this was the statement of Markov's inequality and because epsilon is fixed, this is fixed, this goes to 0 uh, as n goes to infinity by our hypothesis. So, L, L1 convergence uh, implies convergence in measure.